Hello viewers, welcome to this video. I'm Venkat and this is Just Me an Open Source Channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk to you about pod disruption budget in Kubernetes cluster. I've got my Kubernetes cluster. If I do kubectl get nodes, so I've got three node, a master node, and two worker nodes. All of them are CentOS 7 uh, machines. So this Kubernetes cluster has been provisioned using LXC containers. So I've done a video on that um, if you want to use LXC containers for your Kubernetes cluster. Otherwise, you can use uh, VirtualBox, Vagrant provisioning, or whatever cluster you've got. So this talk is about pod disruption budget. kubectl version minus minus short. Okay, so the version I'm using is version 1.13.4. So what is pod disruption budget? Um, so this applies to voluntary eviction, not involuntary eviction. I'll come to that in a minute. So when cluster administrator uh, wants to do some maintenance work on the worker nodes, uh, they want to, what they basically do is they will drain the node so that all the pods um, on that node gets evicted. Um, eviction is a process where um, a process is run in and it gets kicked out before it completes its job. Um, so the parts that you're running on that worker node, which is due to be uh, maintained, uh, will be evicted by your cluster administrator. So if you haven't got any part disruption budget set, uh, then when they do, when they drain the worker node, all the parts in that worker node um, will get kicked off and, uh, and the parts will get scheduled on some other uh, worker nodes. Okay, so that's the uh, the eviction process. So voluntary eviction is whenever a cluster administrator manually drains the node, uh, so that's voluntary eviction. Involuntary eviction um, means whenever a node fails for some reason, uh, the connectivity drops or some hardware failure, uh, the node becomes unavailable or the node crashes. So in those cases, pod disruption budget uh, won't make any sense. It won't work. Right, so how do we uh, deploy a pod dis disruption budget and how do we use it? Um, a quick intro, so how does it work? So when you have a, an application, for example, a web application, uh, running as a deployment with say 10 replicas and you set your pod disruption budget to be 50% so which means to be able to serve your application you want 50% of your pods to be running all the time so when a cluster administrator uh, drains the nodes it can drain up to 50% of your replica count. So it can't go uh, beyond that. Uh, so it will be maintained that always 50% of your pods will always be uh, will be there. Unless there is 50%, uh, it won't evict any more pods from it. So we'll see a quick demo um, of how it works. If I show you a demo, that will make more sense to you. Okay, so cd to play directory and I'm going to git clone my Kubernetes repository. The link will be in the description. cd to Kubernetes. cd to YAMLs. So 11-pdb.yaml. So that's the, uh, the YAML file that I've created for this demo. Um, you can deploy pod disruption budget using YAML manifest or directly from a command line. So before that, let's uh, deploy an application. kubectl run nginx minus minus image nginx replicas watch kubectl get all minus o wide. So if I do that, we haven't got any applications running. So I'm gonna set the number of replicas to four Okay, deployment has been created and it's downloading the container image, the Nginx image. Um, so as you can see here, a couple of pods have been scheduled on KWorker1 and a couple of pods on KWorker2. So it has spread evenly. So I've got two pods on KWorker1 and two pods on KWorker2. Okay, so now while it's getting created, let's go ahead and create the pod disruption budget. So if you want to do it from the command line, 
the command would be kubectl create pod disruption budget or PDB for short and give it a name say PDB demo and the two options that you need the minimum two options you need are minus minus min available so you say how many pods uh, you need to maintain minimum av available it can be either a number say I want at least two pods to be running for this application all always or you can uh, say mention it as a percentage so I want 75 percent of my deployment to be available all the time so 75 percent is uh, three pods or you can say 50 percent and so on so let's say uh, 50 percent that's equivalent to saying two in number okay 50 percent and selector so selector is the one that applies to the pods so what pods gets uh, affected by this uh, pod disruption budget so you need to um, add a selector label um, label now run equals nginx because the nginx deployment we've done uh, will have this label run equals nginx so that needs to be some form of identification um, how to select what pods are under this uh, pod disruption budget okay so you can do it that way okay so pod disruption budget created kubectl get pdb you can see minimum available is 50 percent allowed disruption so it can uh, kill or evict uh, a maximum of two pods okay uh, kubectl describe pdb pdb demo so you can see allowed disruptions to current for desired to total is for 50 percent and the selector is run equals nginx so let's delete that and create it from the yaml file kubectl delete pdb pdb demo that's deleted vi11 pdb.yaml so that's the pod disruption budget so the equivalent uh, manifest file would be like this api version is policy v1 beta 1 kind is pod disruption budget metadata name pdb demo and the spec you need two options min available is three or you can say two or you can say 50 percent 75 percent whatever you want let's say two selector match labels so this bit here that tells you how uh, what pods are under this pod disruption budgets control okay let's delete that come on okay kubectl describe ng deploy engine x um, instead we could do get deploy engine x minus o output in yaml format and if i do less you can see the selector label here labels actually it's here so that's what I copied and pasted in the uh, pod disruption budget YAML file. So you need to make sure the selector that matches your deployment um, is the same that you define in the pod disruption budget. It can be applied to a deployment replica set, stateful set, and so on. And you can also see the label here, run equals nginx, selector run equals nginx. Okay, let's apply it and see what happens kubectl create pdb pdb demo minimum available is 50 percent selector run nginx okay that's created so i have got two nodes here so how to uh, test this if i drain k worker 2 you will see that all the pods that are on k worker 2 will get rescheduled on k worker 1 because k worker 1 has space available let's do that kubectl drain k worker 2 if you just do that you will get some error because there are some daemon sets 
So add this option minus minus ignore daemon set. Okay, and you will see that uh, the parts that are on that were on K Worker two uh, all gone. So terminating. So that's going away, and uh, another two parts based on the age here got created in KWorker1. So all the four parts are now running on KWorker1, and we have successfully drained KWorker2. So you can see these two parts that were on KWorker2 had been evicted, and it got rescheduled on KWorker1. If I do kubectl get notes, you'll see KWorker2 is in scheduling disabled state which means any new pods won't go into KWorker2 because basically we've put that in the maintenance mode. So once that's done, once we do the maintenance work, we need to uncoordinate KWorker2 and that will open up the KWorker2 to, uh, to accept any pods. Okay, so we haven't tested our pod disruption yet. So now if I do if I drain Q, um, K worker one kubectl drain K worker one, what do you think is going to happen? So I'm basically I want to evict all the pods on K worker one. Since there are no other worker nodes available, let's see what happens. So we've set the pod disruption budget to be 50%. So this one is a voluntary eviction. We are trying to evict the pods voluntarily on K worker one, and we need to. Uh, maintain at least 50% of the uh, the parts in the nginx deployment. Let's see what happens. Okay, you'll see uh, the two are getting terminated. The two parts are getting terminated, and here you see uh, part has been evicted, and the replica set is trying to keep up because we say the desired count is four and there's only two ready at the moment and it's trying to deploy another two on K Worker 1. Because we have disabled K Worker 2, it's trying to um, create another two pods on K Worker 1, but uh, it's in the pending state because we are trying to evict at the same time we are also trying to keep up with the replica count. And in the error below you can see cannot evict the pod as it would violate the pod's disruption budget. So, as per the parts disruption budget, we can't evict more than 50% of the parts. So, that's parts disruption budget. kubectl get notes. If I uncordon kubectl uncordon kworker1, basically I'm releasing kworker1, and you can see the two parts um, will get launched, will get started on kworker1. Okay, so that's running back to business. And if you want to edit your pod disruption budget, kubectl get pdb. 50% allowed disruption is 2. You can't use kubectl edit pdb. pdb demo. You won't be able to edit it, I guess. That's what the official documentation says. Let's say 75%. And it immediately gives you the same cancelled a copy of your changes has been stored error is invalid that's okay uh, we won't be able to edit pod disruption budget dynamically we have to delete and recreate it kubectl delete pdb pdb demo and we can create it again kubectl create minus f Okay, kubectl get pdb. This time, minimum available should be three and allowed disruption is one. So it can't evict more than one pod. Let's see what happens. kubectl drain kworker one minus minus ignore daemon sets. Okay, so it's terminating one and the replica set is trying to create another one. That's in the pending state, so it won't be able to create another one because we have uh, scheduled maintenance mode on K Worker 1. It can evict just one part, not more than that. So you can see 75% uh, of your application, of your pods are healthy and running. So that's how you uh, specify the pod disruption budget and how you use it. 
and now if you see the status kubectl describe pdb pdb demo you say allowed disruption is zero because it has already uh, evicted one part current is three total is four and the current is three so it has already evicted one disruptions so minimum available should be three which is there so it can't evict more than that okay so that's what I wanted to share in this video if you've got any doubt please uh, let me know um, if you liked it please share it with your friends and uh, yeah uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel I've got a few more videos in the pipeline and I'll see you all in my next video bye bye